So maybe you didn't know this, but there are several LED tubes out on the market other than Astera tubes. I know, right? But seriously, the Titan tube has been out for over three years now, and there are some hot new players on the market. One of which is the Rainbow 2 and Double Rainbow by Quasar Science. If you don't know much about Quasar, they had some of the original bicolor LED crossfade tubes, which helped dethrone the original Kinoflow, and they have since entered the RGB tube game. They're an interesting company because they're taking a really scientific approach to the color science in their fixtures. Quasar has two different tubes, the Rainbow 2, which comes in three lengths, two foot, four foot, and eight foot, and the Double Rainbow, which comes in two foot or four foot models. To start, the construction of these units is solid. The aluminum housing is sturdy without it weighing a ton, and I like the integration of the new Osseum modular mounting system where you can attach different accessories such as baby pins, suction cups, or magnets to this rail that they have in the back here. You can screw directly into the rail with all of these mounting points or use the slider plate. So I feel like it has a lot going for it in terms of easily mounting this fixture anywhere. A lot more so than the competition. The rubber ends are a nice safety feature for those rough technicians who tend to be a little harsher on their equipment when setting it down. The LED screen is a nice way to make quick adjustments to the tube, although with menus like these where you just see one option at a time, you can kind of get lost in the submenu of a submenu of a menu, but Quasar does include a nice blackout function right on the tube, so you can adjust settings without it blinding you. And of course they have the option to turn the status and screen lights off so that if camera were looking at this unit, they wouldn't see the lights. Note that you can't actually black out the unit if it's receiving DMX, which I actually think is a good thing. So you don't have technicians rigging this in the grid with a button off and you have to go up and physically turn it on like the new Kino flows, which is highly annoying. The obvious biggest difference between this and an Astera tube is that this doesn't include an internal battery. However, you can power the tube with either AC or DC power. On the Rainbow 2, one side has a PowerCon True 1 port for plugging this fixture into the wall, and the other side has a DC in port, which accepts anywhere from 10 to 26 volts for an external battery. There is also a USB-C port for updates, which I find a little annoying because I would say that USB Type-C thumb drives are still not all that common, but you can get a cheap adapter. There are also two RJ45 ports. The input can receive DMX, Artnet, or SACN, but the output can only output DMX. On the double rainbow, one side is the control side and the other has all of your ports. Quasar has really made this film friendly by including a multitude of ways to control this fixture, whether it's hardwired, over CRMX, Bluetooth, or even Wi-Fi. This makes it super easy for connecting to Blackout because there are just so many ways to control this unit. If you need to throw one up really quickly, connect to it directly through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Just remember, Bluetooth is a lot slower than Wi-Fi and often lags, which is usually what you wanna stay away from when controlling fixtures on set. So I recommend going with the reliable connections when you can. If you wanna control a bunch of these on set, link them to a CRMX transmitter or daisy chain them via ethernet. What really gets me excited about controlling these fixtures though, is that I think this is the first tube to have a built-in node in it, like we are starting to see in a lot of newer LEDs where it can take SACN or Artnet and convert that to DMX, and then even pass through its output port in one way or another. The double rainbows have an ethernet switch in them, meaning you can send this unit SACN or Artnet and just daisy chain through your lights and they could all be in different universes because you're sending the entire lighting stream. That's a game changer for gigantic tube rigs because you're no longer running a home run from every fixture all the way back to its data box. The Rainbow 2s, unfortunately, do not have an ethernet switch, but both the Double Rainbow and Rainbow 2 have node mode, which enables you to send DMX through the output port to other fixtures. And if you're using Artnet, you can specify which universe you want to send out. But if you are using SACN, you would have to send the same universe to the output. Either way, it's a pretty cool feature which should simplify a lot of your data runs if you aren't using a ton of addresses in pixel mode. In the latest update, you can have this light be a Wi-Fi hotspot where you can connect directly to the fixture and send it Artnet. You can't send it SACN over Wi-Fi yet, but you can send the fixture either SACN or Artnet via wired ethernet. 
There's a few updates I'm waiting for, which would really take this light to the next level. And that is being able to client into an existing wireless network. That means if you connect this light to your wireless lighting network, say on a stage, it could pull ArtNet or SACN data. The advantage of doing something like this is that you can set up a robust wireless network and keep expanding it with just adding more access points. Whereas you are stuck within a certain range when using a single CRMX transmitter. But this feature still has some work for it to really be user friendly and usable on a film set. Now, the heart of this fixture though, lies with its amazing color science. Tim Kang, Quasar's principal engineer of color and imaging, is applying some pretty awesome research in this fixture that not only make it easier to use on set, but is setting a new standard for this industry in terms of the direction they think we should be moving toward. And I have to say, they have some pretty compelling arguments in these features. What do I mean by this? Let's take a quick look at adjusting the light manually on set. Now, as a console programmer, I'm not one to really care for manual control, but I am impressed with what they've done and I think it's worth noting. Quasar has implemented the J and D or just noticeable difference between each color temp step. The just noticeable difference is the smallest change that a person could sense 50% of the time. So it's a pretty small difference, but it's essentially making perceptible change at every increment, which is why when flipping through the CCT, it looks a little random. Normally when you adjust color temperature on a light, they give you 50 or 100 Kelvin steps. And if you go from say 5,500 to 5,600 Kelvin, you're barely gonna notice a difference if at all, because our eyes are just less sensitive to cooler colors than they are to warmer colors, where a 100 Kelvin jump might be a huge difference to our eyes. What this leads to is a super quick workflow on set, which allows for quick color blending, where your DP or gaffer may want 4,200 coming from the ceiling, but in order to get there, you want one tube warmer and the other cooler as a more naturalistic lighting approach. With the J and D feature, you can start them both at the center point of 4200 Kelvin and then do 10 clicks warmer on one and 10 clicks cooler on the other, and you would have arrived at 4200 Kelvin in the blend. If you went just 200 Kelvin each way on normal fixtures, that middle point wouldn't actually be 4200 Kelvin because there's less of a noticeable change going up in cooler temperatures than down. So the resulting light would actually be warmer. You'd have to adjust it by eye or by meter to get what you're looking for, which takes more time on set. With the new rainbow tubes, just count the clicks. A similar approach has been taken when adjusting the hue angle of a light so that every increment is a perceptible color shift. But we're not done yet. Quasar has also re-envisioned how tint applies to their lights. We all know that when matching fluorescent or other units, we have to add green or magenta, but adding those colors will inherently make the color temperature warmer or cooler. So what Quasar has done is dynamically shift this for you so that when you land on a CCT and then say add 50 points of green, the color temperature stays the same. So you're not dealing with two moving variables and you can more easily dial in that color match. Now, to be honest, I'm not sure how much of a difference this will actually make when it comes to using this on set, but it's an interesting take nonetheless. Let me know what you think in the comments. The last thing Quasar has implemented that is quite a feat is that they have normalized the color output of the light to match whatever the white point the fixture is at. As you may have experienced, you cannot actually measure brightness of colored light. If you ever tried to measure a solid blue light and then set your exposure in camera and then looked at a monitor, it would probably blow out. What Quasar has done is allow you to set your output by the white light equivalent. So I have my tube here in 4200 Kelvin at 20%, and I set my camera at the stop that I want. Without changing anything, I can now crossfade in this color and it won't blow out because it has been normalized to that output I just set with the fixture in white light. That's a pretty big deal because this can be a huge time saver on set if used correctly. Your DP and gaffer can now set the exposure of the light in camera while it's in white light and then add color. DPs will love this. Now, what these features all boil down to is a much faster and more intuitive workflow on set where you can easily grab a light and set it without thinking about the implications of the color science behind it that may have an adverse effect in camera. On the control side of things from a console, I'm gonna start by saying they have a ridiculous amount of profiles and I have a whole video coming up on how to choose the right modes for different LEDs, but they basically have three types basic, ones with effects, and then all of those with an output channel. The output channel is a nice touch because you can essentially change the resolution in your low end for finer dimming. 
So if you're doing some low light stuff, low output mode might be good for you. But if you're shooting something outside, bump this up to high output mode and gain an additional two stops of brightness at 100%, but lose the resolution in the lower end. I don't think anyone has truly cracked this issue yet, which is why do we even need this resolution adjustment? Can it just do that automatically? I guess no, not right now. Most manufacturers just pick a middle spot and we're none the wiser. So at least Quasar gives you the ability to change this. One of the main reasons why they have so many profiles though is because they have 10 pixels in the two foot model, 24 in the four foot and 48 pixels in the seven and a half foot model. That's quite a bit more than the competition, but 48 pixels in the biggest mode is an insane 481 addresses. So it's basically a universe per tube. Yikes. Although X wide modes aren't the most popular yet because lighting consoles still have a ways to catch up in terms of usability, Quasar has included a nice parameter called spectrum control within their X Y modes. It's essentially doing what you can do on some consoles like ETC, where you can shift the spectrum of the light at the same color point by adjusting what LED diodes it's using. If you take an RGB light, there is only one way to get to a color point, but add a white diode, or in the case of rainbow tubes, two white diodes, a warm white LED at 2000 Kelvin and a cool white LED at 6000 Kelvin, and you have almost an infinite amount of ways now to get to that same color point by mixing different ratios of the diodes. Indie Mogul has an awesome in-depth video on this subject, Metameric Failure with Tim Kang that I highly recommend you watch. But basically this allows you to match the color to virtually any light on set. Want this to match a sky panel? Put the spectrum control parameter to around 75%. Want it to match a terrible RGB LED off Amazon? Take that parameter to zero and it will just use RGB to get to that color point. Putting the slider to 100 will obviously give you the best spectrum that it can achieve in the best SSI rating that Quasar has determined. But it's a really cool approach to controlling this fixture in XY mode and matching to other sources on set without putting that control on a console. Almost none of which have this capability. So with all of that packed into the new Rainbow 2 tubes, Quasar has a really compelling product for all types of users. It doesn't have an internal battery like the Asteras, which works so well for those run and gun productions, but it makes manually controlling these a breeze on small sets. I personally see these becoming the new workhorse for those gigantic tube rigs where you have dozens or hundreds of tubes hanging on a particular set because they are just so much more rigor friendly with their multiple power, data, and mounting options. Your programmers will love having more pixels for smoother chases and effects, and your gaffers and DPs will appreciate the premium color science. What's not to love? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and tell me in the comments what you think. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one.